Hello and welcome to the second unit of our Wizards game course. Now today what we're going to do is look at creating game objects and our handler class to handle all of the game objects in our game. All right. So let's take a look at what a game object really is. So I'm in paint now and let's say this is our window, right? This is our actual game. And let's say we want to create, you know, a box, right? And this is going to be like a box that maybe you can move around and do different things, right? So generally speaking, then, if we wanted to create this box, we can. We can create a class. We can create, uh, you know, key input and everything like that. Let's say we wanted to make an enemy now. All right, so there's our enemy. Let's say this enemy just moves up and down. Right? Let's say we wanted to make another enemy, though. Probably, you know, same thing. Just moves up and down. Alright, up and down. Let's say we wanted to make another enemy that, you know, maybe, let's say, moves towards our player. Alright. So, if we actually keep going with this, and let's say this is just one level of our game we're now looking at creating four different class files for each each one of these guys right because we can't even if we have an enemy one and enemy two that does you know the same thing we can't make two different instances of the same class we just can't right we can't say new enemy uh, and then like like update our enemy and then like destroy it because if we destroy this class then it's going to destroy this class if like the health goes down you know so it gets really really confusing and what if we had over 50 enemies in our game we would need 50 different classes and let's say we wanted to let's say let's say we wanted to change just one argument and one of these like let's say we wanted to make this enemy move up and down faster right now we gotta go into 50 different class files and change that. It's just so inefficient. So what we need to do is create one object that controls everything. One object that controls a block, one object that controls our crate, one object that controls our player, one object that controls our enemies, different enemies, enemies that shoot, enemies that run from you, enemies that explode, all controlled with one object and that is our game object and this is what object-oriented programming is so essentially now it's not just gonna be you know just one object but instead of having 50 different instances of just our our same enemy we can have one instance of that enemy and then from that we can create multiple ones and then if we want to change something we don't have to go into 50 different classes and we don't have to make tons and tons of memory of the same enemy alright so I'm gonna create a new class and I'm gonna name it game object and I'm gonna make this uh, an abstract class so essentially what we're doing here is this is like gonna be the, the 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 bones right the bones of our object so what does every object have in common right it's like saying okay when a new baby is born what does each baby that's born have in common well let's see it has you know generally speaking two hands two feet right it has you know the same bone structure it has two eyes you know these are all things that we can count on every object having the same so on a coordinate plane in our in our game what does each each object have the same well each object has and I'm gonna call this protected int an X and Y value we need to know the location of our object alright another thing that we ha have in common which I'm gonna make a float is our velocity X and our velocity Y and this is gonna be the speed at which our objects are going so if our velocity x is like 3 then it's going to be moving in the right direction uh, th uh, 3 pixels a second okay 
So let's go ahead and create the game object, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the constructor of our game object. And inside here, I'm going to put in x and y, and that's it. And then here I just say this dot x equals x, this dot y equals y. Because what we want to do is when we inherit this game object for any other class that we want, we want to also be able to input our different x and y positions. Alright, so now what does each object have in common with every other object? What kind of methods do they all have? And so I'm going to say public abstract void tick because every object needs to update their positioning or do whatever. And I'm also going to say public abstract void render graphics G because every object needs to draw something. It needs to appear to be something. It can't just be nothing. What are we also going to do? Well, every every object needs a rectangle get bounds so we can do collision detection. So every object's going to need that. Now what's cool is you can make different sort of game objects like this. So if you wanted to create a particle system in your game, you could create, instead of game object, you could say particle object. And so now what does every particle have in common, right? So you can start narrowing that down. All right. So now also what we're going to do is I'm going to go into, if you're in Eclipse, this is what you'll do. If not, you can just write them yourself. We're going to create getters and setters for all of our methods. So source, generate getters and setters, velocity x, velocity y, x and y. And there we go, so it can generate all of it for us. So now whenever we're referring to a game object, if we want to set the x position or get the x position, we can do that easily. So now, how do we handle all of these game objects? You might be asking yourself, right? How do we update each game object? You know, do we have to go into you know, our game class here? And I can actually get rid of window. Do we have to go in our game class here and say, you know, game object dot tick, you know, game object dot render, uh, game object one dot tick, game object two dot tick, game object three. And what we can do actually is create a class that will just run through a loop, update all of our game objects that could possibly be in our game, and then just run a single method of that class dot tick. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to go into a new class here. I'm going to call it handler because this is going to handle all of our objects. And here I'm going to create a new linked list game object. I'm going to call it object and it's going to equal to a new linked list game object. All right, now a linked list is essentially an array of objects. So it gets a bunch of other different information that we need. We can also use uh, the linked list functions to get a certain uh, ID of one object over another, which I'll show you in the next unit how we can go ahead and ID that. So here I'm going to create the simple methods, public void tick to update all of our game objects and public void render graphics G. Control Shift O to import that. So in our tick method, what we could say is for int i equals zero, i is less than object dot size, i plus plus. And here we can create a temporary game object. So game object temp object equals object dot get i. Now what we can say is temp object dot tick. So this for loop here is running through all of our game objects. It's storing each object into our temporary object, which is equal to object.get i, which gets our ID, which I was saying with the linked list while we can use different functions to get the ID of it. Then we can just call this temp object.tick and it's gonna just tick every object that's in our list. So I can do the same thing with render instead of tick, I'm going to say render G. And that's all we essentially need to do. 
Also in the handler, what, what I want to do is be able to add and remove objects from our list, our, our link list. So I can say public void add object and I can create a new game object. Uh, I'll call it temp object. And here I say um, object dot add temp object. All right, and I can do the same for removing. So public void remove object, game object, temp object. And then I say object dot remove temp object. So very simple like that, we can add and remove objects to our list. So now let's go ahead and initialize this handler into our main uh, class here. So private handler, call handler. Here I can say handler equals new handler. All right, because we need to actually initialize that there. And then in our tick method, all we say is handler.tick. And here we say handler dot re uh, render g. Very important that you put handler dot render under our background because what happened is code gets compiled and ran from top to bottom. So it's going to render this first, render this second. So it's going to show our handler dot render all of our objects above our background. If you put that, if you put this. Here, it's going to render all of our objects first and then render the background on top of it. So just know that for future, uh, that that's how depth works with Java. All right. Now, there's different ways to get around that. Um, but just now for this uh, course, that's the easiest way to do it. And you'll have no problems doing it that way. So now if we go ahead and run the game, as you can see, nothing has changed. But now let's use this game object. That's because we have no game objects in our world. Let's use this game object uh, accordingly. So let's go ahead and create a new class. And this is going to be a test. And this is going to be called box. And here we're going to extends game object right off the bat. Now here we get a we have to add the constructor and we have to add our unimplemented methods. So if you just hover over it and just click that, we now have, check out all this, public void tick, public void render, graphics G, we get our X and Y, everything looks awesome. So here I can say g.setColor, color.blue, and let's say g.fillRect, X, Y, we'll make the width 32 by 32. And here I can say x plus equals velocity x and y plus equals velocity y. And that right there, we've just made an object. So in our game, if we really wanted to, underneath our handler, we could say handler.addObject new box at 100, 100, and run the game. And there you can see we have a blue box in the game. Really, really cool. So now if we go ahead and copy this, say paste it down here we'll put this at 200 we now have two objects in the game just like that and to show you that they're now updating as well I can set velocity x equal 1 we run it again as you can see now they're trucking along across the screen awesome so that's going to be it for this unit. Go ahead and rewatch the video if you need to, and then go to the next unit where we're going to be discussing IDs. So essentially, how do you pick, uh, let's say, a box from a circle? Because they're both game objects, so how does the game know which one's a box and which one's a circle? That's what we're going to be getting into next.